Hello YouTube, Blue Matona here, and welcome to this episode of Game Guides, where we're going to be looking at the decision to either occupy, enslave, or exterminate after you take a new city on the campaign map. So, obviously those are the three options, and before we go into exactly when I would recommend using each option, we have to cover what each one entails. So, we're going to go ahead and start with Occupy Settlement here. Really, Occupy doesn't do that much. I mean, you're, you're really doing nothing to the city. You're taking the city into your empire the way it currently is. So, you're not doing anything to the population of the city. You're taking it, and it's full population, and it's going to become part of your empire on the campaign map. Taking a look at what Exterminate does next, basically, it's pretty simple as well. What happens is that you exterminate three quarters of the city's population as long as that will leave the city with at least 400 population left. So this dramatically reduces the size of garrison you need to control the city. And especially in the late game, it can be really beneficial when you're taking enemy cities with tens of thousands of population that will be impossible to control otherwise. It's important to note that exterminating the population does not reduce unrest or culture penalty when you take a new city, but rather the only thing it really reduces is squalor because there's less population in the city in general, which, you know, obviously then makes it easier to control with a garrison, which I go into detail with in my garrison video that I posted a few weeks ago. I'll throw a link to that in the description if you want to take a look. So here's a side-by-side -side just to show you this of the exact same city, one time I occupied it, and one time I exterminated the populace. And as you can see, the city's much, much happier when I exterminate the populace, but the unrest values and the culture penalties are still the same amount. The unrest is 30% for both, the culture penalty is 50% for both, but the big difference is that squalor is significantly less. So that's why it's a lot easier to control the city after exterminate populace versus occupying it in the late game. So the third option is to enslave the populace, and this has a lot of different things that can happen when you do it. So we're going to go ahead and take a deeper dive into this one. Um, enslaving takes half of the city's population and distributes that amount of population to the rest of your governed settlements. So like extermination, this will greatly reduce squalor in the city, making it easier to control, but obviously it doesn't take away as much population as extermination does. So while it does make it easier to control, not quite as much as extermination. But there are a lot of benefits that enslavement provides. So first off, the slaves are sent to all your governed and settlements. That These are settlements that have a family member in them acting as governor. So, it will not send slaves to settlements that don't have a family member in the city, except for one condition, and that is if none of your settlements have family members in them, then the slaves will be evenly divided amongst all of your settlements. This is usually not going to be the case, though, because if you're going you know, to enslave a populace, there are probably specific cities that you hope that the enslaved population goes to. So the way it works when you have all your governed cities is it will split the enslaved populace equally among those governed cities. This split up of slaves happens at the moment that you click the enslave button. So if you move your generals out of all cities except for one and then attack the city and enslave the populace, then all of those slaves that you take will go to the one city with a general in it. This is a general rule. But there are situations where the distribution of slaves is not exactly like this. And the one situation is if you're playing as one of the three Roman factions. If you're playing as one of these factions, then half of the slaves you take will go to the city of Rome. So for instance here, the city of Rome has exactly 40,000 population. And if I move over here, you'll see I have this all lined up. So we're going to go ahead and just attack the city here, take the city. And once we do take it, I'll show you what this does. So we have the option to enslave the populace, which will disperse 7,665 slaves amongst the governed settlements. 
but half of these will go to Rome. So we should expect Rome's population to go up by, what, 3,830 you know, or 32. So we'll hit enslave populace, go back to Rome, and as you can see, it's now 43,832. So it went up 3,832 population. So if you're playing as one of the three Roman factions, 50% of the slaves will go to Rome, and the other 50% of the slaves will be distributed amongst your governed settlements. Now, once the civil war starts, and you're at war with the SPQR, and you take Rome, then if you get slaves, this is no longer the case. So this is only before the civil war begins, when the SPQR is still its own country that's allied to you. Once the war begins, and you're at war with them, and you take Rome then that is no longer the case. It will act normally like it does for every other non-Roman faction. Finally, when you enslave a population of a city, you gain the temporary trade increase and population growth increase that is the slavery resource. So as you just saw, I just enslaved this province here. And now you can see these, you know, sort of chain handcuff looking things on the map that slaves. It's a valuable resource, and we're going to look at what that does right here. So not only is it a trade resource, which is nice, but it also provides a bonus for population growth. So you can see here slavery, which is giving you half a percent of population growth added to it. And this not only is in the province that has the slave resource, but also in all provinces that that one trades with. So for instance here, there's land trade between these two provinces. So if we click here, we can see there slavery half a percent as well. So having the slave resource is definitely valuable, but it's important to note that it only lasts for 20 turns. So in 20 turns, those shackles, that resource will disappear from the campaign map and the province will no longer have access to the slave's resource. So the next major important aspect here for these three options is the finances behind them. So Occupy Settlement and Enslave Populace give you the same amount of denarii gains from looting. It's usually a pretty small amount, um, but when you're attacking a large city, it, it can be pretty significant. For instance, this is 2283 for a city that has about a 23,000 population. But where you really make the money here is Exterminate Populace. As you can see, the denarii gains from looting jumped up to 15, almost 16,000 here. So if you are in desperate need of money, exterminating populace is a pretty good way to go. It is also important, though, to keep in mind that, as we mentioned this minute ago, the enslaved populace gives you 20 turns of an added resource in that settlement. So while that's not going to make up the difference in money between these two options, it is something to keep in mind when you're deciding which one to do. So the question boils down to, when to pick each option. So let's review the pros and cons of each one. For Occupy the pros, you get a small amount of money gained and the settlement stays at its current population level. There's no loss of population. The cons, it's the hardest to control after you take it because of the public order penalties and as a result has the highest risk of revolt out of the three options. Enslave. Well, the pros are you still get that small amount of money gained, the settlement loses half its population, making it easier to control, that half of the population is distributed to your other settlements that might need it, and you gain the slaves resource for 20 turns. Because of all this, there is a net loss of population of zero, because all population you take from this city gets put in some of your other cities. The cons... Half the population is sent elsewhere, making the town less useful. You can't recruit as many troops there. You might not be able to expand the town anytime soon, etc. And the other con is that you need to manage your governors well so that slaves add to the population in the cities that you want it to. And remember, for this to happen, you have to have governors present in those cities and not in the other cities. So that is something you have to do with slaves. You have to really manage where your governors are very effectively. And finally, we have exterminate. Pros, well, you get a really large amount of money. 
when you exterminate the population. And you reduce the population by three quarters, making it the most effective way to control a city that you just took. Cons? Well, you have this huge extreme loss of population, which can make the town virtually useless for a little while, because you're going to need to build back up the population to either expand it and construct new buildings, or to be able to recruit as many troops as you want to. So, when you should choose each one? Well, in the early game, occupying is going to be your best call. The cities you're taking in the early stages of the game will not have super high populations, so they shouldn't be that hard to control. And you really want to savor all the population you can get in the early game, and occupying lets you hold on to that population and be able to build up strong settlements from there. You should enslave the city when you want to increase the population of other cities so that they can expand quicker and maybe would have trouble controlling the public order in the city that you just took. But you don't want to exterminate the population. You want to put that population to good use. Then yes, enslaving is the best call. And you want to exterminate, well, mainly in the late game or a city that is going to be really hard to control. Extermination cuts down the population drastically. So if you're taking cities that have belonged to one faction the whole game and now have 30,000 population, for example, exterminating the populace will be a really good way to get control of that city without having to worry about revolts. Also, you get a lot of money. So if you're short on money, extermination is definitely the best way to go. And that pretty much covers it. So I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Uh, if you have any differing opinions about when you use each one, please let me know in the comments section below. I enjoy your input and I'm more than happy to debate this with you, but this is just my opinion of when to use each one. And yeah, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you all next time.